Hi and welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I'm going to show you how to make my zippered boxed bags. Or are they boxed zippered bags? They're zippered boxed bags. Anyway, you guys have requested it. So this is my boxed bag or zippered boxed bag. Uh, they're fully lined. So they've just got a cotton lining on the inside. Usually I make these with my upholstery fabric that I've got tons of, literally. Uh, but this time around I'm actually doing these ones with quilting fabric. So these ones are lined with a zipper and just a little uh, a pull or a, a zipper tab at the end there. Now these ones here that I've done, you can do these in any size at all. Uh, these ones here are all done with... Um, remnants so it's actually they're done with um sample swatches so these are some swatches that you get from reps when they're coming around trying to sell you their fabric and when the range is finished you just get these little squares of fabric so i try to use these um either as linings or as the outer for the boxes that i'm doing so these ones here are just this one i think it's like an astrology type um ze uh, a zebra and that sort of thing so stick around i'm going to show you how we make this size boxed bag so this is just a little one um, but it's nice and compact and as i said you can make it in any size so hang around and i'll show you how i do these because i'm doing six of these box bags all at once i've got all my fabric prepared so i have um, six pieces done with my labels already on them and I've also gone and stabilized the fabric for the main body of my fabric. I'm not stabilizing the lining fabric, this one here. So I've just gone and used a normal dressmaker's interfacing on here. You can use a pallon if you want to have something with a little bit more body. You can use buckram and iron on buckram, anything you like really. So what we need for our boxed bag are two pieces for the main body. So we've got a back and a front and they measure nine and a half inches across by six and a half inches down. Now just be aware of any directional fabric as well. So if you've got a directional print, you want to make sure that the nine and a half inches goes across and that your images are six and a half inches down. So we need two pieces for our bag and we also need two lining pieces for our bag. And they are the same size so we're going to have two pieces at uh, six and a half inches times nine and a half inches and then just with any off cuts of fabric that are left over from your cutting cut some strips that are one and a half inches wide so these strips are one and a half inches wide the, the length you want to have it at least four inches per bag because we're going to cut this into two so we'll have two two inch strips to prepare your um, zipper tabs, just fold the fabric in half, lengthwise like that, and then bring the raw edges together, and then we can close that up. So just fold that in together there, clip it together, and stitch down on both sides. Uh, normally, if you, ideally, if you have just a long strip of fabric rather than cutting all of these up if you're sewing to sell just cut one long strip of fabric at one and a quarter inch one and a half inches fold the edges in and do one really long strip these were just off cuts left over when i was cutting this fabric up so i just used what was left over but if you're sewing to sell and you do have a long strip of fabric it's better time management if you just do it all in one go Let's get sewing. The other thing I usually do is sew all my zipper tape onto all of my bags all at once. So I'll have a great big assembly line going with my bags and I'll just, rather than cutting my tape, I'll just add my zipper tape to all of the bags all at once. For the purpose of this, I'm just going to do one. So I'm just going to cut my zip a little bit bigger than than the finished bag so there's my zipper tape overlapping 
So this is, I find this a little bit wasteful, but just for the purpose of this video, I am actually just going to do the one and then I'll go and sew all my others using the long tape. What we want to do is place our zipper tape with the coil faced down. So the lumpy side faced down onto the main body of the fabric. Just clip or pin it in place. And take your lining piece and place that over the top. So we've got right side up here and our lining piece, we want that right side down. So we have the two, two faces facing each other. And line up your lining piece along the top and the bottom so that the whole thing matches all the way around. And just clip that in place. So we're going to take this to the machine and we'll stitch that down. So put your zipper foot on your machine and put that down. So we want our fabric looking like that with the zipper tape, the lumpy side facing down. We'll back stitch at the beginning and the end. If your fabric shifts a little bit, that doesn't really matter. We can trim this back later. And backstitch. And it's as simple as that. So we can go and top stitch this down straight away. Or if you're doing a whole lot of bags all at once, you'll go and insert all your zippers instead. So we've stitched one side of our bag and we ne now need to go and do the other side. So just open up your fabric, bring the zipper tape out. We'll top stitch this after we've put the bag pieces together. Lay right side up, grab your back part of your bag and make sure if it's directional that you've actually got the directions of your birds or your whatever facing the right way so if you have this upside down like that you're going to have the wrong side facing on the opposite side of your bag so turn it around make sure they're facing and just flip that over and line it up to the top of your zip so you want to line up the side of your bag with the, the main body of your bag and we can clip that in place and down the other side do exactly the same thing and we've enclosed the zip inside the bag so you can see the zipper tape, tape is facing the right way. Turn this around and have your lining side faced up. And grab your other piece of lining and have that faced down. So you want the two faces facing each other. And line this up again, just like you did with the main body. And we'll clip all layers together. So what we've got in here is the main body of the bag, the zip, and your lining piece. And we'll take this to the machine now and we'll stitch this all the way down. And that will enclose the zip on both sides. Now I might just suggest that before you attach your zipper tape to your bags, if you use labels, just check that you've actually got the bag positioned the right way. So I've sewn my zipper tape to the bottom of the bag by accident. I didn't even check my work. I've got to unpick this now and transfer my zipper tape to the top because I don't want my sign to be upside down or my birds for that matter. All right, so I've been distracted and the only way I'm going to be allowed to sew today is if I play with Coco. She's brought Wilson out to me. So this is Wilson, our... Um, broken ball. Uh, I'm going to play with her. Okay. Good 
Wilson. Now that I've done my duty and played ball with Coco, I can actually get back to these. She'll leave me alone for about half an hour. So we've got all of our layers together and we're just going to stitch down the other side of the zipper tape. And go all the way to the end and we'll back stitch at the end. Now that we've got our zip inserted, we need to top stitch this. But before we do that, we can take this to the iron and we'll just press our fabric away from the zipper tape and we'll do the same thing for the other side. So you want that sitting nice and flat before you go and do your top stitch. Uh, I don't actually do that. I am confident that I'm not going to get any ripples in my fabric and that it is going to sit nice and flat. What I do do is just put my fingers between the two layers of fabric and I hold it taut just like that and it's... Um, it's tight enough that it will actually just allow the fabric to sit away from the zipper tape. And we'll top stitch that down about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. Now I don't sew across a zip at this stage because I'm going to put a zipper slider in soon. I haven't quite decided which end I'm putting it in at but also if I have any problems I want to be able to pull my zipper tape apart. So if I stitch that down I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to just turn my work around and continue on the other side. Now normally when I'm doing a few bags at a time I will actually just sew the same side down on all of my bags, just chain stitch it and then I'll go and do the other side. There we go. So top stitching done on both sides and it's nice and even. There's no rippling in the fabric. All right, with your regular foot back on, and while I've got these handy, I'm just going to stitch all of these strips closed. So you just want to um, stitch all the way down one long end and then come back up and do the other side. Now when you're putting a zipper slider on you want to work out which way the bag is going to open so that comes down to personal choice. I like my slider to come from here and open out that way. So keeping in mind that my label is on the front of my bag I'm going to want my zip to open along there. So to put the slider in have the slide with a curved edge facing you and the little floppy bit on top. Okay, so the curved edge facing you, floppy bit on top. We just want to open this up a little bit so you can see that my zipper tape is completely closed. So just open this up just a little bit like that. Insert your tab or the slider just until you feel resistance. So it's just going to slide in over those teeth there until it doesn't want to go any further. Grab the other side and pop that in. It doesn't matter if this opens up further. Hold it down on a flat surface. Put your fingers on either side and just give that a push. So you can see the slider is completely closed. Okay. To open this later, as soon as I pull the slider across, that will actually open my bag. Okay, but this is actually by inserting your slider in like this, it means that our zipper tape is actually closed at both ends and it'll make it easier for us not to have lumpy bits when we're closing up the bag later on. 
and the other thing too is that if you happen to forget to open your zipper um, slider when you're closing up your bag all you have to do is stick your fingers in and this will actually come apart but we don't want to do that until this is stitched down so we can go and do this for all of the bag pieces the next thing we're going to do is place our fabric our main body of the fabric right side together and you can clip or pin this in place if you like just line it up and stitch all the way down and this forms the bottom of our bag now I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance here back stitch at the beginning and the end and we'll do the same thing for the other side so this is the main body of the bag which is closed into a little tube take the other side of your bag which is the lining side and we'll match that up and we only want to sew a few inches down so half inch seam allowance again I'm going to sew down about three inches and then back stitch then I'm going to leave a gap of about three inches back stitch and then stitch to the end with a back stitch so what you've done there is left an opening for turning through later on so we want the lining side left open just in the center and the main body of the bag stitched closed now that our uh, bag is closed at both ends we can take this and just open out the main body of the bag and you can take this to the iron and press the seams open do the same thing for the other side we'll just press our lining seams open and we're ready to close up part of our bag so with the main side up position the seam directly over the zip so you want the center of the seam line here over the center of your zipper teeth here just line that up nicely there and just take the fabric away from the lining and bring that across and put a clip in place there and we'll do the same for the other side of the main body keeping the edges nice and even there we go so we've got the main body of the bag clipped together we'll do the same thing for the other side take the center of the lining and we'll line that up with the center of the zip and then open that out just pop a clip in place same for this side and we'll repeat for the other end It's at this point that you want to make sure that the uh, zipper on the inside is open just a little bit so if you go back to the main bag the bag just open this out just a little bit you can even open it up with your fingers if you want to so just have a little bit of an opening and make sure that your zipper tape or your zipper slider is actually in the middle we don't want it close to the edges here so just have that in the middle doesn't matter how big the opening is because we can actually pull this apart later 
So you need to have that done before you start clipping your sides together. So you can match up the other end again. There we go. So we've actually clipped this together separately because we don't actually want to close this up all in one uh, with all the layers together. We actually want to close it up separately. So we can take this to the machine now and we're going to stitch down from the edge of the zipper tape here to the end and we're going to use a half inch seam allowance. So back stitch at the beginning and the end. Make sure that your lining pieces are out of the way and I'm using a half inch seam allowance here and I'm just starting just below the edge of the zipper tape. Back stitch and continue on down until about one and a quarter inches from the edge and then you can back stitch again. I've gone a little bit beyond uh, because it depends on really how, how big my square is going to be later on. So just make sure you backstitch beginning and end. If you want to for, uh, for speed, just go and double stitch it. Now that all of my bags are stitched closed on the side, but still left open just where the zip is, we need to trim our corners down so that we can actually box the bags. So we've got our, I'm just going to draw this so that you can see it. This is our stitching line here. This is the line that I've already stitched so that you can see that in blue. And what we need to do is make a quarter inch, one and a quarter inch square. So I've got one and a quarter inch marked on my gauge here. I've got the folded edge of the fabric here. And I'm just going to mark a square at one and a quarter inches and I'm going to take the measurement from the stitched line. If we end up doing it from the outside edge, we're losing half an inch of our square. So you need to make sure that you put your measuring gauge on the stitch line and mark your one and a quarter inches from the stitch line like that. And this is the square corner that we're actually going to cut out of our bags. The other part of the seam doesn't actually apply. Now, rather than using um, my seam gauge, because I do a lot of these, I actually have made myself lots of little templates. So I just use template plastic and I've got a heap of squares cut out to the sizes, to varying sizes for different projects that I might do. So that might be something that you would consider when you're making bags to sell. So here's my one and a quarter inch template. And again, if I show you where my stitched line is, which is just there, I'm just going to lay my template over the top of my fabric, line it up at the bottom and on the stitching line and mark my square. So this is the square that I'll be cutting out on all my corners. So this is just a lot quicker for me to do. Just line it up on the stitch line, mark a square and go around to the other side. Now I'm not going to do this on the lining side, I don't need to. So for speed what we need to do now, just get some clips and we want to make sure our bags line up on the side there. So if we just get some clips, just put that in place like that so the edges of our bags are lined up, we can actually cut this all off at the same time. So the folded edge and the stitching line is what we want to line up.
there we go so we've got the lining and the main body of our bag attached for the purpose of cutting out this next step so grab your scissors or rotary cutter whatever it is you want to use to cut your fabric and I'm just going to cut out that square and I'm cutting through all the layers of fabric just up to the corner and straight across here and there's a little corner cut out another trick you could do rather than drawing in all your lines is you can actually take this next piece and take it over to your fabric and then cut around the edges like that but sometimes your uh, sizing can go off a little bit especially when you start cutting bigger and bigger so the drawn line is just as easy for me so again just go and cut up to the corner now we can get to the fun part of shaping the bags so I've intentionally left this open because it's going to make it easier to box our corners if we just leave this open for the time being we'll do that last now while we're at it we can go and insert our little tabs into the side of our bag so fold this in half if you're new to doing this kind of work maybe make this two and a half or three inches long instead it'll just make it a little bit easier for you to hold it so fold it in half and the folded edge is toward the inside of the bag and we want to insert this tab in between the layers of the main body of the fabric not the lining fabric because if we put this in the lining you're going to have tabs on the inside of the bag and we don't need that so the tab goes in between the zip and the, uh, the seam of the main body of your bag so stick that in the middle there and we want to line the tab up just over the center of the zip there just like that and that will sit over the top and we can clip that closed and we'll do the same for the other side of the fabric so we've got our little tab just sitting inside there you can see the little tabs there and then we're going to stitch from here all the way down and we'll stitch this closed and we'll go over this a couple of times now the fun part here is that we're actually going to stitch the lining and the main body of the bag the zipper and the uh, little tab so it does get a little bit bulky go slow when you go over this part here uh, but do go over it a couple of times and when we're stitching this closed just go up to the area where you haven't previously stitched before because we don't want to stitch this down all the way otherwise we won't be able to box our bag so just either side of the zipper tape here where you haven't stitched before we'll do exactly the same for the other side if you're concerned about the bulk of your fabric and your machine not being able to go over the zip and all the layers of fabric instead of putting your tab together like this you can actually put your tab together just like that all right so rather just have it overlapped a little bit place it down over your zip and that distributes some of the bulk in there as well and then you can stitch that down just from the edge of your zipper tape to the other edge of your zipper tape with got to make sure that these pieces are not stitched together and we only want to stitch from um, just below where we stitched earlier so we've got our half inch seam allowance and we need to make sure that we need leave room for our boxing later on so start sewing here go slowly over the zipper area of your machine
back stitch. And when you get to the teeth, just go slowly. And then you can back stitch. Just up until you get to the beginning of your stitching from before. And you want to make sure that that is still open there because we've got to box our bags. So there we go, we've closed up one end of our zip and we've got the zipper tab or the pull tab just on the inside there. So what we can do now is cut off our squares and box our bags. So I'm just going to mark this crease for you so that you can see what I'm doing. I'll do that on both sides. Take that line and bring it up to the seam here. Grab your pins or your clips and turn your fabric, just push the, the seam of your fabric across until your seam is facing away from the zipper. Line up the edges. This is a little bit fiddly here, but once you've got the hang of it, it's actually quite easy. So we've got one corner of our bag ready to be stitched together. We'll do the same thing with the other side. We'll do the same thing with all layers of fabric. So we've got four corners to do on the main body of the bag. The bigger your bags are, the less fiddly these are. So you can do these any size you like. The fabric away from the zipper and line up that center point with the stitching line or the seam line and we'll do that for all of the corners. Okay so I've got all four corners of the main body of the bag ready to be sewn together. We'll do that first and then we'll do the lining otherwise it gets a little bit bulky with all the clips in place. Just move your lining out of the way, place that down and we're using our half inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch all the way down here. Back stitch at the beginning of the end and if you like you can secure the center where the seam is as well. I do like to do that. There we go and we'll do that for the rest. Okay so that's the main body of my bag done and I can now go and do exactly the same for the lining pieces of the bag. So we'll just open that out, bring the edges together, clip it in place and we'll close it up. We've just got to bunch all the other fabric up out of the way to get the lining in place. Now the reason why you don't want to, when we're closing the area with the, um, the zip, the reason you don't want to go too far beyond is because it makes it really difficult to actually sew the um, boxing closed. So you want to have as much room as you can on the side there. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable for sewing. And that is it. Our bag is finished and all we need to do now is turn it through and uh, close up the opening and then we're all done. So to turn it through just find your opening in the lining and bring all the fabric through. Your zip is there and this is one that I actually forgot to uh, open up but you can see because I've got a little bit of a gap there I can actually just pull that open. So stick your fingers inside the lining area and poke your corners out and we'll do that for the other side as well. 
So I've just got my fingers inside the lining area. And before I worry about the corners on the lining itself, I'll go and close that up. So just grab your lining piece. Because we've uh, pressed this, it's got a seam that wants to just fold inside. And we're just going to stitch this closed. Get rid of all those loose threads. So we'll take this to the machine and we're just going to stitch really close to the edge. With our opening closed in there, just push all the corners out to meet the corners in the bag. Close it up. And there's our boxed bag. So this bag is made using a nine and a half inch by six and a half inch rectangle of fabric. You can actually do these at any size you like as you go up in uh, width of your fabric, go up in the length of your fabric as well. So it doesn't matter what size fabric you use at all. It's pretty cute if you like birds. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's actually been a bit of fun making these ones up, especially with these um, little one-off fabrics. So I've got uh, leopards, a couple of leopards, a couple of, I think, they're probably maybe a zodiac type uh, zebra and these ones are the bird ones that you've seen me do in the video so I made six of those out of half a meter of fabric and half a meter of fabric is equivalent to about 20 inches of in 20 inches of fabric so it's a whole width of fabric by 20 inches and you need um, if you're going to make six of them at my measurements you'll need two pieces, one for the lining and one for um, the main body of your bag, obviously, and then uh, just your zippers as well. Um, I mentioned in the video about making sure you get your alignment right for the fabric, so you want your birds, in this case, to go the right way. When I cut this one up, I, this has got fish on it, and the fish are actually going... Um, vertically rather than horizontally so I should have taken more care when I actually cut this piece of fabric out but it's really nice and vibrant I don't think anybody's going to worry that the fish are the wrong way it's probably only me that will notice it and you guys as well so let it be our secret um, I'm going to sell these I made about three an hour if I don't um, get carried away with the dog and playing games with her I uh, can probably get a little bit more done, but she kind of it has a tendency to interrupt me. She gets quite clingy and wants to play games all the time. So I hope you enjoyed that little segue into go Coco's ball games. Um, as I said, I make about three an hour. Uh, my hourly rate's $40 an hour, and you want to allow for the fabric and the material in these. Uh, I'm going to put $30 on all of these. Uh, I like the colours in these and as I said they're one-offs. They look good with the label in the front there. Um, but I'm going to try these at $30. Normally I sell my bags for about $20 to $25 using the upholstery fabric. But I, they usually don't cost me anything. But I think for these ones uh, I'll put $30 price tag on them and see how they go. Especially since they're one-off colours. Um, what else have I got to say? suppliers list will be in the link in the comment section down the bottom so my zipper suppliers and my label suppliers and I think that's all I've actually got in there apart from fabric we all know where to get that so hope you've enjoyed this video and if there's anything else you would like me to make let me know uh, put, a, put a message in comments down below catch you next time